eight zero plus the uh, eight two point point five two plus the eight six five point nine four, and that's the two o two eight forty six. If I go back here, we could see that we have the 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 January liability two o two eight forty eight. So it's a couple pennies off. That's gonna. So that's the general idea. So we had the payroll go up in January. We're paying it off in February. What is left in February then as a liability are the accrued of the liability for the February paychecks, which was just one because we're paying monthly in our case. So if we ran the payroll reports, then we, could, we should be able to tie in basically the liability as of the end of the period. Now, there's something I just want to note here that if you had like a third party process the payroll, you'll note that the, the, this liability this payroll liability is just a timing difference. So in other words, if I, if I go to my payroll taxes over here, we, we can see that you know, everything's gonna run through the income statement at some point. There's only a difference on, on the timing difference, meaning when we process the payroll, we, we recorded an expense of this amount, but then we withheld uh, the taxes. Now, if you were on a cash-based system, and, and you worked with a CPA firm to do an adjustment at the end of the period, you could simply wait until it clears the bank, use the bank feeds to record the net check instead of the full check here. And then when you paid off the payroll, as we saw here, that will also clear the bank. And when it clears the bank, you could, have sim you could just simply record it as, again, payroll expense using the bank feeds because you have someone else, a third party, an ADP or a paycheck, for example, processing the payroll. And, and so then you would and see it's just a timing difference. So, and then at the end of the year, possibly, you can get the, the payroll reports from the payroll provider and possibly have your CPA firm or tax preparer do the adjustment at the end of the year. And if they do the adjustment at the end of the year, they can then break out the wages versus the taxes, the payroll taxes versus the wages, as well as any accrual that needs to be in place, meaning withholdings and your portion of the payroll taxes for the last pay period, which has not yet been paid, so that you can create the financial statements as of the cutoff date, the end of the year for taxes or possibly for external reporting as well. So in other words, if I went to the tab to the right, right click on this and duplicate this tab, and we go into, let's say, uh, our payroll reports. Let's go into our reports down below, close this out, and we're gonna go down all the way down to the bottom. We've got our payroll reports. Now we saw that, that you have those ex the, the, the reports that you can export to Excel that we saw before. That's a nice tool. Let's just take a look at the payroll summary report here. And I'm going to make this go from 010124 to 022924 and then apply. And so now basically we have our uh, summary. So we've got the uh, checks that went out, uh, each of the checks that went out for the two pay periods that have happened. Uh, we have the employee taxes that were withheld, the net pay the employer taxes. So that's a pretty summarized report. Let's go back on over and open up another one. I'm gonna go back down and say, uh, payroll item list. No, what did I want? What was the one I like here? I think it's the payroll summary by employee. I'm gonna right click it on this time, open it in a, in a new tab. And so this one gives you, yeah, I think this is the one I was looking for. So this one gives you, I'm gonna close the hamburger each individual for what they've earned up until this point in time, I believe. And let's actually run it for the whole period, 010124 to 022924, and then run it. So now we've got the pay for the two periods. Now note at the end of the year, if someone else was doing your payroll, then they might provide you with a report such as this that you can then use to kind of summary, summarize and make sure that your financial statements tie out to this report, which should also match the, the year in financial reports or tax return reports that you're gonna to give to the government, the, the quarterly 941s, 
the 940, the W2, and the W3. So you can think of this as the, the, the two individuals having their gross pay totaling up to 13 966 right? If I go to my profit and loss and was to look on my wages, 13 966 that should tie out to what you give the government in terms of the 941s and the 940 and so on. And then you've got your uh, employee taxes and deductions. So this is the employee taxes that were taken out each individual and uh, in total, note that that number is not on your balance sheet, on your income statement over here, because this tax number is just the employer portion. Those were the employee taxes that we had to take from the employees and pay on their behalf, but it's really part of their pay. There's the net paycheck. Then this is our taxes that we had to pay over and above per each employee for a total of the employer taxes 154045. So if I go to my profit and loss, we can see 154045. Then we made this adjustment to it. But that that's the problem with adjusting things outside of the system, right? Because this is the number that's going to be tying out to uh, to the reporting forms that we're going to be creating. So that's going to be our our uh, taxes. And then you could do a similar report for basically your liability uh, reports. So that's the general idea. So let's see where we stand right now. Here's our balance sheet. We're balancing it, balancing the sheet like a basketball on one finger. And then we've got the profit and loss, spinning it round, spinning it round like crazy. I could balance it and spin it. And then we're going to go to the trial balance. So if your numbers tie out to these numbers, great. If not, try changing the date. See if it's a date range issue. Remembering this is just simply the balance sheet on top of the income statement, starting with the assets, going from the checking account down to the machinery and equipment, basically debits. That's what the company has measured in dollars, not in, uh, not in units. And then who has claim to those assets, the flip side of the coin, liabilities and equity, starting with liabilities, which start at accounts payable, credit balances, going down all the way to the unearned revenue. And then we have a claim to those assets as the owner, as we can see, if we were to transfer the accounting equation to assets minus liabilities equals equity, the book value of the company, we have got the owner investment, kind of like the common stock, if it was a corporation, us putting money into the business and the owner's equity, similar to retained earnings if it was a corporation. And then the income statement, which is part of owner's equity or retained earnings, but broken out for one year's activities where we have income credits minus the expenses debits, giving us a net credit on the income statement, which will roll into the owner's equity equivalent to the retained earnings if a corporation QuickBooks doing that on a yearly basis. So if we change the date 010125 to 010125, we see that QuickBooks will close out those temporary accounts into the permanent account of owner's equity.